Yo, what's good, all? It's Big Game BG. I wanted to show you guys this because I'm really into the sneakers, obviously, that Big Baller brand created um, and the story behind the ZO2s as I purchased the first pair. Um, but in this video, you're actually going to see the brand black creators and owners, David Race and Billy Dill, um, discuss one of the shoes they created before Big Baller brand came around and kind of eventually became the ZO2 prime remix when big baller brand was in a bind and needed a shoe for all their retail sales check out the story i don't want to ruin anymore enjoy guys this is big baller brand this is uh david race and billy dill from brand black and the story behind the zo2 prime remix so this is what we were going to follow up the rare metal with uh the idea here was going to be the prospect so we were going to do the idea here was, um, you know how in cars they'll do like a GT3 or they'll do, they'll do a special version that is the sort of lightweight racing version of the normal inline one. And so the idea here was to take the guts of the original rare metal and then sort of, you know, make it extreme. So we had, and the goal here was to make the lightest basketball shoe ever made, which we achieved, I think. This shoe is nine ounces. Hold That's that really, same. can you uh, hold that up? Can you hold it close to the camera? Yeah. That's, I mean, that material is like super strong, but super light. Yeah. So this is that transparent ripstop. Uh, I think we were the first ones to use this too. It's become quite popular in our industry. I'll leave it at that. Is, uh, that, the car is that the carbon heel or is that the... Uh, that's the real carbon fiber heel, yeah. I don't know if you can see it well, but that's real carbon fiber, uh, carbon fiber plate inside. So again, this is kind of like a Porsche GT3 where they take a normal 911 and then they just, you know, they start stripping it down. You're actually paying more for everything they take off. <laughs> I, I just, I just saw a ZO2 comment. So good. That's interesting that they caught that. Interesting that you caught that. So uh, one day, well, Billy, why don't you tell them how it started? Because I think they reached out to you first, right? They did reach out to me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Let's just say that uh, we pushed back pretty hard. Yeah. At first, we were, we, were definitely, we were definitely like, yeah, we're not really that interested in that. And then... Um, it, it was interesting, you know, the way they came at it, and I, and I think we, we respected it, their whole intention was to go against the big guys, which yes. we really, we really kind of migrated towards that idea from the beginning as well. Like, we, we didn't want to be a Nike or an Under Armour or an Adidas. And they were trying to do something different as well. So we thought perhaps there would be some synergy there. At least we get to design some innovative product. Yeah, because I think you're right. I think what, what gets lost in, in all of the mayhem that, that surrounded that was initially the idea was, right, disrupt, disrupt, disrupt. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think I was really attracted to the idea because I think, you know, we've always been Mavericks. We've always been trying to do things our own way and, and go out on our own. And I love the idea that in an industry that has exploited sort of young black men, right, forever, um, that what happened in the music industry potentially could happen in, in, in sports footwear and, and, and apparel, that, that a kid could own his own destiny, could, you know, own his own masters, own his own everything. Totally. And uh, that was really cool. So Props to them for trying it. Yeah, and I think, you know, like, any, like anything like that, I think, you know, the first couple of people are going to have a lot of, a lot of arrows in their back. Uh, <laughs> but I think, you know, and it takes a couple of people that were sort of the, the guinea pigs that didn't quite pull it off but got close before somebody finally does it. You know, this won't be the last time that we see some kid, you know, the next Zion, uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll, we'll try and do the same thing but learn, learn from the mistakes that we made there and, um, and make it happen because that was, that was close to, to being something pretty extraordinary. With all that said, they said they needed a shoe in 60 days, if I'm not mistaken, right? 60 days. 60 days. So that's, they, impo that's impossible, by the way. Yeah. The shoe that they had, that everybody saw the first one, uh, let's just say that it was not performing up to the level that they were hoping. No one knows the real story about them shoes, though. It was about them ZO2s I was playing in, they was not ready. <laughs> they were? Really? No one knows it, but Demo had a backpack, and he had extra, like, four pairs of shoes in there, because I had to switch them every quarter. Cause they would just rip. I mean, that's, if I if I <laughs> wow. had to say like, why wow, wow. the first two games, like the real truth is like, yo, you the heard shoes it just wasn't ready. <laughs> so I'm like, 
I'm on the phone, like, this is when Alan was running everything. I'm like, yo, like, I'm not playing in them shoes. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care, bro. He's like, all right, just, just switch every brand next, every every game. I'm oh, like, what? all right, cool. Wow. So that's how that happened. Like, if you literally have my shoes from those games, like, they're just, like, exploded, bro. Why uh, Why did you Why did you wear them? Just because you guys had, like, already. Because they're my shoes. And you're like, like, <laughs> I had, I had to debut like, them. Like, we, we already, up, we are, we had already up the hype it. and shit. We went so far with it. I'm like, cool, I can, I can get a quarter in, but that's it. We got to switch them every quarter. And, and, uh, and that their athletes were not willing to, to play in it. And so we said, well, we can't make you a shoe in 60 days. It's not even possible. The reality is we can't even put an, an existing shoe in production in 60 days. That's crazy. We'll try and move some mountains. And we're working on this thing. Let's take this thing and let's modify it into your shoe. Mm-hmm. 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 Take a look at the Jello's uh, the silk hologram. Um, I will say that like a game of telephone, <laughs> as we went back and forth with them, uh, we didn't see eye to eye on aesthetics, on function, on any of those things. And so the shoe was quite a bit different at the end, but it still performed really well. So happy with it. We decided to go back into the lab and remix the ZO2 Primes into the lightest basketball shoe ever made. This was the ZO2 sneaker released to the general public. This was not the one that was ripping this was the one produced by Brand Black that was super successful. And that was it, guys. Um, please head over to my Instagram account if you're interested in any Lonzo Ball sample shoes that he wore on court of the ZO2 Prime Remix. Colorways exclusively only to Lonzo Ball that were not released to the public. Um, check it out. I'm going to show a few here as a teaser. And then follow my account, Big Game BG, on Instagram if you haven't done so already sub and like the video and i appreciate you i hope you enjoyed this as much as i did making it peace